Hi everybody, <laughs> I'm Linda Hello. and this is my son Josh Hello. <laughs> and as we've been doing a series on men's emotional fitness, I thought I'd get him in and um, get him to chat about things and how it began for him. So Josh, one of the things that's become family legend mm. is that... Um, you decided to run away. You wanted to run away when you were the age of four. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and <laughs> so my daughter put these sunglasses on us and it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so <laughs> you said to me you wanted to run away from home and I packed bags and, you know, you went out the front door. But not long after that, you quickly turned around and came back and I said, well, if you come back in, you have to live by my rules. Mm. So, do you remember that time? Very clearly. Okay, what was happening for you emotionally at that age? I just guess that, you know, nothing was going my way. I was upset and I just wanted to run away from home. Oh, okay. Nothing was going your way. That's, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, so, I was trying to think, there was another thing mm. too that, um, should we take these sunnies off? <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> So, as you grew up, and, oh, that's right, remember when you were, uh, again, same age, four, mm -hmm. and you started to play the Nintendo. Does anyone remember having a Nintendo? <laughs> and you'd get really frustrated at it, so you're pretty angry, and you used to throw the remote control on the ground until I told you that if you did it again, you wouldn't be allowed on it. Yeah. So, what was happening for you back then? I guess I was just, you know, getting frustrated because I couldn't complete a certain level or just something wasn't happening that I wanted to happen and so I'd just throw it on the ground and I'd get very upset and angry. Yeah. And, yeah. Did you have a lot of frustrations growing up with, you know, not being able to express your emotions? Yeah, I did. It was, it was very difficult. Like, I would be feeling something and I just didn't know how to handle it or how to even talk about it or how to even approach it and that just especially with the my brain and how full full speed it was going it was just very difficult indeed okay so around the age of 12 ish your dad and i broke up and you came to live with me initially mm. but then you decided you wanted to live with your dad so what happened? What were you feeling at the time, apart from your parents breaking up? What was happening for you that made you wanted to live with your dad? Well, I just didn't want to be away from my dad. I just wanted to go and be with him and live with him because I, I, I loved my dad and we, we had a very good connection and everything. And it was, it was pretty good. I mean, we did have our ups and downs, but I wanted to live with him because, you know, I just guess the dad was relaxed and... A lot, less, a lot more lenient on me and yeah just actually that's true isn't it yeah it's very true he was he was more lenient on your kids than i was mm. i was very much routine order um work together as a team <coughs> yeah all that sort of thing wasn't i oh yeah you were yeah if it wasn't routine it wasn't in the routine <laughs> i love it mm. but that's because we had anyhow it's not about me so, a couple of years after you went to live with your dad, you wanted to come home again. Yeah. And you were pretty upset at that time. We got to. Yeah, I was. Um, my dad was living with a new girl and she was just trying to run the whole house and just... I just felt like she was getting between my dad and I and I just couldn't handle it anymore. So I'm just like, Mum, I'd like to come home. And then Mum's just like, well, if you're going to come home, these are, these are the conditions and everything. And I'm like, okay, I agree to that. Yeah. Well, I made you take a few months to think about it, didn't I? Yeah. I said, you know, if he was going to come home, then it had to be permanent. There mm. wasn't any to and fro I guess that's me being organised, isn't it? Yeah, organised. Plus... I don't know if I'm ever exaggerating this or not, but one of the parts that I do remember and it's quite prevalent in my mind because it's always stuck with me is that mum's just like, if if you decide to come home and then leave to go back and live with your dad, you'll never see your brother and sister again. 
Did I say that? You did. You said that. Why would I have said that? I don't know. You might have been angry or something. I don't know. But that's what you said. I don't remember that. Maybe. I just remember being quiet and saying, you know, you need to take your time. I remember you saying that. I would never have said that. Yeah, you did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Never yeah. saw there. Okay, well, I'll have to think about that. About. Oh, I know why. Because if you went back with your dad, mm. you literally wouldn't have been coming back to my house at all. Mm. So it's not me saying you can't see your brother and sister again. Yeah. It would have been that you won't. That's right, he wouldn't have. You're right. Yeah. He wouldn't have seen his brother and sister again because he wouldn't have come back to our house. Because when you're away at your dad, you never come to visit me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> okay, so really, emotionally, by the time you came home, you were pretty emotionally congested, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Congested, upset, just couldn't get it out. I mean, Pretty angry. Yeah. Pretty pretty too. Yeah, well, you were always good looking. There's no two ways about that. Um... So, how did things begin to change for you? Well, I just guess, you know, that mum got me back into a routine. I was going back to church. I, I was starting to feel more relaxed and more comfortable. I mean, mum just got remarried. That was difficult for me too, because this was another, this was a stranger marrying my mother who knew nothing about, basically, and it was just, it was difficult, but, I did manage to get through it and there were a lot of things I didn't want to do or admit or say but... So what did your mother do when you were emotionally constipated? You'd always tell me how it was and I'd always be like, yeah, you're right, I am feeling that way. It's just, it's always been very difficult for me to admit that because when a world has a, have, has a certain opinion of a man being a certain way all the time, it gets very difficult to admit how you truly feel. That's a really good point. So if you got guys in your life and they're having a hard time admitting how they feel, give them time, mm. yeah? yeah? But don't them. give up. Don't give up on them. It's, they want you there, they don't want you to give up. And it's just like, well, I'm this tough nut, I'm this tough guy. It's like, well, actually, mate, look, no, you're not. You just, got, you just want to be tough because that's how society views you. You're not allowed to feel emotions, you're not allowed to feel love, you're not allowed to feel compassion, you have to be tough 24-7. And me, I mm. want to break that cycle for all men. I want to be like, you know, I want to, one day, it is my dream one day to be able to create a safe space for men where they can come and feel how they feel, where they can feel how they want to feel mm. and not have what, have uh, the society on their back being like, you, can, you have to feel a certain way. We have to suppress them. Mm. You know, my friend of ours said the other day that he, the manner in which he was raised was toughen up and um, yeah. shove it all down. Yeah, and mm. studies have shown that male, male toddlers between the age of two and four are actually, they show more emotions than uh, female toddlers. What? Yeah. No way! <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> and so whereas women are brought up being like, yeah, you can feel your emotions, come on, woo! By the time a man's a teenager, he doesn't know what to feel. It's just like, should I have to feel tough? Should I feel this? If I feel this way, I'm going to get called gay and whatnot. But me, I've always been like, well, my mum's always taught me to feel how I truly feel and not really care what everyone else feels about how I feel. I'm just like, okay, well. Well, teenagehood was pretty tough for mm, us, wasn't it? It was. I mean, I still have distinct memories of literally going toe to toe with you and you would say there's nothing wrong you'd be super angry like he's standing there and you could just about to see flames coming out of his ears <laughs> and uh, yeah. then he'd be saying I don't feel that way at all <laughs> and I'd just be standing there right in his face saying, well, yeah, you do. Mm. This is how you feel. I can see it. It's, it's pouring out of me, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, it took us a long time to get that communication happening, didn't it? Yeah, a lot of size 12 foot up yeah. the butt. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
But I'm very thankful for it because I now know who I am. I now can express my feelings. And if anybody doesn't like it, well, tough. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I was just trying to think. And the communication, though, between us over the years, we've continued to work at it. Yeah, we have. Like, if there's a problem, we don't let go until we sit down and talk it out. Mm. Your side, my side, my side, your side, until we work out what's actually happening underneath. Yeah. I think one of the most um, heart-moving times in our relationship was one Sunday night, Josh messaged me and said, can I come over? And I was like, yeah, sure. It was out of the blue. Yeah. And um, you walked into my place and he basically sat down and, and was crying his eyes out. And I'm sitting there absolutely puzzled because <laughs> normally if there's something wrong, it's I'm aware of it or um, <laughs> or it's between Josh and I and we're, you know, mm. working out what yeah, it is. Yeah, we're working out what it is. But... but that time, that to me was a really significant time in our relationship, wasn't it? It really was. So, do you want to tell everyone what happened for you? It was the time I started to realise that, sorry, I have to start at the beginning. So basically, my entire, when mum and dad got divorced, my dad imprinted in me that my mum was a bad person and that I wouldn't treat mum very well. So one Sunday night after church, I just felt like I'm like, wow, I treated my mum so badly. She's not a bad person, and, and it it just it, it broke me, basically. And when when I realised what I was doing, I just said, mum, I, I I told mum the whole story, and I just broke down because I couldn't believe what I had done, you know. It's like I that's just something that I have to live with. No. You know? Um, but it was... Uh, the reason why I got Josh to share this story with you is because this is how important it is to raise our children, raise our sons with consistency, with care, with love, no matter what's going on. Mm. We don't give up on them. We don't stop being who we are as parents. Mm. And... When Josh came to me and told me this, I was floored because we'd had like, it's not a wedge between us, but it was just a barrier, it wasn't, and I could never work out what it was. Josh didn't really see what it was per se, um, but we kept knuckling down and working through stuff. Yeah. But when Josh told me, I was in shock and I was like, oh wow, no wonder you fought me on everything uh, over the years mm. you know it was very hard for him uh, to accept me as any kind of authority figure in his life and parents are the authority in their kids lives mm. uh, they're adults you know we need to be but for Josh to say this I just was like well first of all I was flabbergasted because I never um, I always raised the kids that they would love their dad no matter how he, no matter what he did no matter what he said no matter how he treated them that they would always love their dad and you oh, i guess i was rather naive in expecting the same thing in return but yeah. <laughs> that's me <laughs> um but for josh to have the courage to say that to me i was really proud of him and um, it certainly started to open up your life a lot more to oh, yeah, you as yeah, well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, certainly. And I mean, that's one of the pinnacle moments in mine and mum's lives where we actually were able to find it so much easier to talk to each other after that and just sit down and talk stuff out. And like, whenever mum gets angry now, I'm just like... Me get angry? I don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit hard when you're a passionate person, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Right, there was a there was an incident a while ago where mum got angry at us kids and I just managed to talk to her if she didn't want to talk to anyone I'm like ah uh, when we were kids whenever we would say that <laughs> mum's just like no you have to talk to me so I'm just like I'm going to try that but try it in a gentle approach instead 
<laughs> yeah, I was pretty much. Oh, you let's were, do this, wasn't I? Yeah, you were. You were. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But I mellowed over the years <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, she's not a marshmallow yet, but she's getting there. <laughs> Jeez, thanks, Josh. <laughs> Yeah, well, it happens. But um, now it's really wonderful between us. Yeah. We can just be honest. And and look, one of the other times that we went into transition was when you were living, started to live out of home. Mm. And look, we had to have great communication then, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> Um, how did we learn to communicate with each other then? It was a learning process. It was slowly. Yes. It was slowly, but we did it bit by bit and we managed to have good, stable communication between each other. We sorted out rules. We're like, you know, let's go out to lunch and stuff. And Oh, that's all right. I used to say to you, say to you mm. If you don't want me to come over, just tell me. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. It was like I had to learn to give him permission to say to say, you know, Mum, I'm not I can't do that, Mum, I can't talk now. Mm. Mum, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm off doing something else. <laughs> because you'd always feel Yeah. Conflicted. I would. I'd just be like, Well, what do I want as an adult? Do I want Mum in my space twenty four seven? Well I mean, what boy doesn't to be honest. <laughs> Joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, love you. Um, but I had to start, like, I wanted to start feeling like an adult, start living independently, and I'm just like, well, I want my space, and I want to be able to organise when I see you and when I don't see you. Mm. It was hard for me to do, because I'm just like, I don't want to make mum feel bad, but I need to step up to the, I need to step up and do that, you know, I need to start putting those boundaries in place. Mm. It was difficult at first, but... And one of the learning processes you went through at that time, I remember really distinctly, was that he started to learn about how women communicate. And that wasn't from me. Remember Bill? Yeah. Yeah. And all of that time, Mm. he started to teach you how women communicate differently and need different things. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's all... I hope that you can see from today that emotional fitness for men comes about in multiple different ways and actually on the way over here I was thinking about how important it is that men model how their children treat their mother Mm. like you were it just I don't know it's hard to explain how all of a sudden the light bulb goes on but then I realized that Josh only treated me the way he did because of how his dad treated me yeah, yeah. Um, and, and look back then I had no clue I didn't understand it but now because of your willingness to be open and learn about all this stuff mm. uh, now I get it and it makes even more sense why I left yeah you know I mean there were a lot of other factors but yeah yeah to have so I think for Josh and I having reached a stage where you know we treat each other with respect it's a whole journey, isn't it? Oh, yeah. A journey that we need to change for the generations that come after us. And I think that's the most important thing, mm. is that we need to get on board with each other and change for the generations that come after us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because one in four men commit suicide. One in four. And so that needs to stop. We all need to get on board with it in some way or another. So that men know that they can become emotionally fit and not have to go down this path ever again. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us today, Josh. No problem. (laughs) Can you reach out and press the finish button? (laughs) Thanks, guys.